in sculpture and architecture. For this particular project, we're going to be looking at the relationship between sculptural forms and architecture, how those two relationships can culminate some really interesting things. For this project, you're allowed to choose a piece of architecture, whether that be a whole building or part of a building or something as simple as a, simple as a window or like a doorknob. As long as it has something to do with architectural elements, it's pretty open-ended. So with materials with this project, we're going to be focusing on learning how to use wood. So we're going to be utilizing the wood shop and its power tools. So we have stationary tools like the bandsaw, the table saw, the miter saw, and we have some stationary sanders as well, in addition to several power tools such as drills and uh, things along that matter. We also are going to learn a really handy tool, which is the laser cutter. And that tool has the ability to do really accurate, detailed cuts that are fairly complicated that you can't necessarily do by hand. And what's great about that tool is not only does it work well with wood, and you can use material up to a quarter of an inch thick as far as wood is concerned, um, but it does work with other materials such as cast acrylic, which is um, also very similar to plexiglass. Uh, we've cut leather on that machine. Uh, you can etch ceramic. So there's all kinds of really great possibilities and it's going to be really fun for you to learn how to utilize that technology. So first thing we want to think about with this project is we want to think about, you know, sculpture and architecture. So sculpture we know is three-dimensional forms, like three-dimensional objects of some kind, uh, and architecture. So let's start off by defining what architecture actually is. So this is the Webster's Dictionary version, and what it is, it's the art or science of building, specifically the art or practice of designing and building structures, and especially habitable ones. Uh, second definition, formation or construction resulting from or is if from or a, con a conscious act as in like the architecture of a garden. A unifying or coherent form or structure. A product or work that that's, you know, composed of buildings of some sort. Uh, the method of, or style of a building, uh, like Gothic architecture, which we're going to talk about briefly in this presentation. And then the manner in which components of a computer or computer system are organized and integrated in different program architectures. So that's what the Webster's Dictionary version defines architecture. So we're really focusing on like buildings, uh, how they're interacting with space. And, you know, with architecture, it has a lot to do with functional space that's meant for, you know, us to inhabit. And sometimes, you know, we can even think about um, you know, how it impacts nature, how it impacts, you know, maybe even other animals. There's all kinds of ways uh, structure impact lives. First image I'm going to show you is a uh, Gothic cathedral. So, you know, I'm sure you've seen some of these and uh, buildings inspired by this, you know, around even locally in the area. There's um, a lot of churches use this architecture um, in order to create these religious spaces. And personally, I find these buildings quite beautiful with the way they're designed and, you know, all the intricacy with the details. So some key features with Gothic architecture is the details, like the, you know, the rosette window right here, you know, a lot of the arch windows and, you know, a lot of that familiar structure. So I wanted to talk about a couple artists that are using Gothic architecture as an influence for their work. So, you know, uh, what's great about art is it's, a, it's um, a field where you don't really have any wrong answers. So I thought it'd be helpful to look at how a couple different artists approach being influenced by the same thing. So first artist I'm going to show you, her name is Diana Al-Hadid. She's a Syrian artist based in New York City. And uh, what Diana does with her work is she starts off with kind of like a raw structure. So with this piece, we kind of have to pick it apart a little bit because there's a lot going on, as you can see, 
on the bottom part, you know, you can see that similar architecture that appears in that previous image, right? So she was very influenced by that, like those Gothic arches. And she used that as kind of like a jumping off point where she had that bottom structure and then she started building these solid pedestal like structures. And then the structures got like a little more thin, you know, she has these like different kinds of layers that are brought together by these, you know, kind of drip like forms, you know, and then she put some figures in there. So, you know, when I talk about Al Diana El Hadid, I like to think of her kind of like as a jazz musician. So if you're familiar with jazz, usually the artists will start off with like a couple of notes and then they'll intuitively play other notes uh, in order to create a song. But, you know, there's not really like, there's only like some partial planning here and there. You know, they're kind of intuitively making those decisions. And I feel like Diana Al-Hadid works that way in a lot of her work. Because, you know, you see the structure and then, you know, you have these rigid pieces. And then you have these other pieces that she's made here where they're more like organic shapes. You know, and they kind of layer and feed into one another. And let's take a look at another one of her pieces. You know, again, that, that Gothic architecture, it's slightly more abstracted in this one, but, um, you know, you can see bits and pieces of it in the work, you know? So again, she starts off with like that, you know, thicker structure. And then, you know, she goes back in with like these thinner, you know, more narrow pieces, you know? So you're looking at like different densities with, um, you know, the material. And then, you know, she's also using color, you know, to kind of emphasize certain areas. So um, as far as her work, you know, she's got a quite an extensive body of work. So you can definitely uh, Google her and, and see some other works that she's done. And, you know, if you happen to be in New York City, um, normally she has work in a lot of the galleries over that way. So, you know, if you're over there, you might encounter one of her works. Uh, here's another one here. This is an older work where, you know, it's not as architectural, but you can see that rigid kind of structure is reappearing in the work where it kind of has that skeletal type uh, look outside of the thicker areas of the piece. So you can see she tends to use that quite a bit in the, the works that she's making. So, you know, again, this one is definitely inspired by architecture, but it's a little bit more abstract than her other two previous pieces. But, you know, you can definitely see that in there. Um, and then here is a, another version of one of those as well. Um, you can, again, you can see those same structures, those um, arches from the Gothic Cathedral. Uh, but this piece, you know, kind of was built like a house of cards, you know, and she's using color to make a lot of contrast, but making a real, like she works in a lot of these really wonderful layers. You know, here's another example here too, very similar to the first piece that we looked at. Um, you know, you're not seeing those structures quite as much in those, but you're seeing kind of like that overall flow and wave that she has in her pieces. The next artist I'm going to show you, his name is Wilm, uh, Wim DeVoy. And with his work, you know, again, like we're, we're talking about how all these artists are influenced by Gothic architecture. And this one, you could clearly, you know, see a lot of that structure made in the piece. So the way this one's constructed, um, I mentioned before that we're going to be learning how to use a laser cutter. And with this work, it's heavily detailed and extremely intricate. So a lot of this is heavily reliant on a machine like a laser cutter in order to make this work. Um, and he's made these that, you know, they're varying sizes. So this one in particular uh, is probably like the size of a toy truck. Whereas, you know, he's got other ones like this one where it's super monumental, where it's the size of an actual vehicle. So, you know, to think about it on these two different scales, you know, it's really interesting. So, um, again, digital technology is extremely crucial in order to get some work that's this detailed. So um, it's pretty great that you all have access to that. And here's another one of his pieces. Um, so you can see the intricacy and the detail 
up close. So, um, you know, again, a laser can accomplish that. And the way he would do these, would he, he would do these in layers. So, like, you know, if we take a look at the rim of the truck here, this is one layer. And, you know, then he would go in with another layer and likely glue a lot of these pieces together, uh, which is called a process called lamination in order to create depth. So lamination is when you glue multiple layers together. Uh, usually it's a process that's done in a lot of woodworking, especially if you want to make material thicker um, in order to carve or do any inlay work, you'd have to do that process. So what an inlay requires, I'm not, sorry, not an inlay, uh, lamination requires is um, you're going to require glue and a lot of pressure. Um, and that's key to keeping your wood pieces together. So not only does this take quite a bit of time to make with the level of intricacy with um, these pieces because he has to design all the files in the computer um, and then he would have to go in and he'd have to you know glue everything together very carefully too because as you can see these pieces are really thin and delicate looking so if pressure isn't applied correctly it could easily break some of the work. Um, and then we're going to go with some other examples where you know, we're kind of talking about just different pieces of architecture. So, um, you know, Allison Schatz, you know, she's doing these mirrored fence sculpture pieces, which are pretty neat and interesting. Um, I personally have done a lot of work with uh, white picket fences with some of my sculpture that I've been doing. Um, so I enjoy that quite a bit as an image as well. Uh, then we've got artists like Rachel Whiteread, who's really interested in kind of like the interiors or the deconstruction of architecture. And she'll usually have these pieces as like one solid color. Uh, and she'll also even do like the castings of like the insides of houses and whatnot. So uh, as far as just kind of like thinking about like a piece of architecture and maybe even deconstructing it, Rachel Whiteread's a really great example. Uh, the next artist, his name is Doho Su, and uh, Doho Su does a lot of fabric uh, architecture pieces. So what's interesting about the way the architecture he chooses is, you know, it kind of sags and it kind of, um, you know, isn't stereotypical of regular architecture. So, you know, changing the material does a lot to it. You know, in our case, we're working with wood, but if you wanted to mix other materials into your project, if that makes sense for your idea, that's definitely open. Gordon Matta Clark, he is really famous for uh, this piece right here where he took an actual house and split it. So, um, and you can see a couple different angles there. So, you know, you can even think about like the interiors, the exteriors, um, any one of those areas that could be interesting for architecture for you. Um, I mentioned before that you could use different parts that are used in architecture. So like I mentioned doorknobs or, um, you know, here in, in Shihari Shiota's piece, we've got windows, you know. So if there's something that's like really interesting to you, like even like the molding on doorways or, um, you know, just kind of different structures that you see around the house, you know, or if there's like a really interesting, um, like stained glass window, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, just, uh, the key is being aware of what's around you even, you know, uh, even take a walk down a street and see, you know, what kind of cool things pop up in the architecture. So Chiara Shiota in her case, she uses a lot of old windows to create another structure. This is Jeremy and Whistle, and you know, you could see the architecture influence in his work in a couple places. You have the big green piece in the middle, which is, you know, reminiscent of like steel beams. And then you have these other uh, wooden pieces that are kind of reminiscent of bricks. You know, it could be as simple as even as the, of the building materials that you see. Um, this is an artist I recently came across and his name is Poon Sham and he actually teaches at the University of Maryland and I thought he was a really cool example because he uh, made these pieces out of wood which is you know the material we're using and he made these really cool 
structures that are layered in a way they almost feel like fur when you look at them and you know these are definitely architecture influenced you know he's got these really great arch forms coming out of that you know so that's his work um you know if you're interested in like the idea of like kind of structure and textural kind of looks for your pieces this is martin purrier and again, along that same line, uh, Craig Randich, and, you know, he makes these other forms, but again, still influenced by architecture, you know, um, these look like, you know, cross beams for, you know, sections of like roofs. So, you know, um, basically, you know, just be aware of those things that you're just kind of seeing in the everyday. And, you know, he made a completely different form out of that. And uh, now we're going to take a look at some student examples from uh, not last semester, but the semester before that, uh, a year ago in the spring. So this is uh, my student, Jess, and she was really influenced by uh, gardens that she saw at like Versailles. And she's always been kind of interested in like plants and structures that hold plants. So when it came to this project, she designed... Uh, she made the computer file and made all of these like super intricate cuts. So she heavily utilized the laser in order to make this piece. And this is Daniel. Daniel was inspired by a um, architectural sculpture he saw at Grand Central Station and in New York City. And he was really inspired by the way they kind of built the terminal so he's interested in like the really like kind of modern architecture and he made a sculpture influenced by that so he uh he was another one that heavily utilized the laser in order to make um this form so this one took a lot of planning and a lot of figuring out he also designed in um the program on how to you know make little slots that fit into his wood pieces so you know everything was pretty like once he got everything cut out it was relatively easy to assemble so that's how Daniel went about his and then um, this is Kayla and Kayla was Kayla did a lot of research to actually find this like she's always been a student that was really interested in animals and in this particular piece she searched around and she ended up finding this uh, house in Germany, this daycare center that was um, built to look like a cat. So she wanted to kind of make a design based off of that. So she created her own version of that and then she painted it various different colors to make it like really bright, warm and inviting. And then this is actually the first semester that the sculpture class happened and this piece is, is by Melissa and uh, Melissa did a really kind, like I really love the idea behind this piece. So um, she's only been to her grandmother's house uh, a couple of times and you know the house is in South America and so she only has kind of like fragments of memories of this piece or of the house because you know she's she was there when she was young and then she saw lots of photos of it so she's she wanted to recreate the house just off of her memories so she designed you know all of the interiors and all these parts so you know again she was another one that heavily used the laser cutter and um she when she handed the project in she handed it in like this and she was saying, oh, I'm really sorry I didn't get it done. And, you know, the whole class and she told us the story behind it and how it had a lot to do with, you know, these fragmented memories and how she's building the, the work. And we all like everybody kind of collectively stopped and said, you know, it, it's really compelling, kind of incomplete. Like, you know, it, like if she didn't say anything you know I still thought the sculpture was really great and interesting and I really loved the story behind it and you know the class really seemed to enjoy that too so you know I think this piece has a really great uh, kind of history to it and it's really well made as well uh, this is a student named Conrad and Conrad his architecture projects um, he ended up doing too because this is the wood one and then he ended up making one that was a mixture of wood and metal 
And I actually have that in this presentation as well. And Conrad was really inspired by Egypt. He got the opportunity to go to Egypt, I believe twice now, uh, with Northampton, which is really great. And he learned how he learned about the different uh, pyramids and he got to visit all of that in person. And, you know, ever since he's done that, he's been in love with Egypt and his trip. So he wanted to make a lot of work inspired by his time over there. So, um, you know, this is based off the Egyptian pyramid. And then, you know, we have a couple other of his pieces that are inspired by the Egyptian period. So now um, this work, he it wasn't really big on using the computer very much. So uh, a lot of this was just done kind of like the old fashioned way, just measuring everything out, cutting all the joinery and gluing everything together. Whereas this one, you know, we did use the laser a little bit more. Um, you know, we cut the laser with the laser on the um, different triangle pieces in order to make the pyramid. But a lot of the stuff he did was like hand drawn on, you know, copper sheet. This one was lasered with the laser cutter. Um, so we got that negative space in the drawing. And this is Melanie. Um, Melanie's inspiration for her project was uh, like 1950s diners or like, you know, kind of these si like big signs, like neon signs that you'd see like out west in like vintage like Vegas time or, um, you know, things like that. So she was inspired by, you know, the structure of those signs. So like here... And then she was also inspired by the colors. So that's what influenced a lot of her um, choices in the way she went about color for the work. So, you know, Melanie was a painting person. So color was super important to her. So she did this really nice job of uh, creating kind of like this gradient um, using these different colors, but then also activating the sculpture three dimensionally. And then uh, this particular student um, she was really inspired by the Titanic movie and she chose the door that they were floating on as their architecture influence for this piece. So this one was also done on the laser. We, it did a lot of heavy, um, etching. So, and then she actually went over it with a wood burning tool to make the burns like a little bit deeper. And this was a project we ended up getting a little bit more complicated with where, um, she wanted to to really kind of like activate the the sculpture being on like these ice like forms to symbolize the icebergs so she decided to make a mold and make um different icebergs and dye them different colors so it would be under the piece and then we have a, a project where we use the plasma cutter and she wanted to have these metal figures on here to kind of contrast what she did on the door so, you know, this one became a little bit more of a complicated mixed media project, but the uh, architecture was a jumping off point. So I guess you could say, you know, this student kind of went on the Diana Al-Hadid route where she just started off with one element and then just kind of riffed off of it like a jazz musician. So, um, you know, she did a very nice job. And that's the last image that I have for you. So I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody comes up with with their architecture and sculpture influences.